it's my first time seeing this. I seen it at Dick's place, but I didn't really understand what was going on. So that's why I wanted to find out about the Showbill House, but what it's about. So that's why I picked for this, um, for South Fallsburg. I lived here, and this is this is my town that I moved to, in, and I would like to fix up. I thought it was just everything was made out of straw. Everything it was just the roof and everything, and I was like, how is that going to last through the winter time? The response is almost always the same, surprise and confusion. When hearing about a straw bale house for the first time, people often envision something out of the story of the three little pigs. What the question is legitimate, what is a straw bale house? And more specifically, how does this turn into this? Well, it's very likely, and evidence suggests it, that straw has been used in the making of houses since the Stone Age. However, it is in the 19th century that we can find the first documented one. In response to a number of factors, the chief one being a lack of significant amounts of lumber, settlers in Nebraska developed the straw bale house over a hundred years ago. It was originally meant to be temporary lodging until money could be scraped up for a wooden one, but its coziness, warmth, and durability kept the construction of them going, all the way to the present day. Well, there are many, many benefits to a straw bale house. First of all, it finally aligns human behavior with the requirements of biology. Uh, human law or human society is clearly uh, in a major collision course with uh, the natural or biological world. And if we use natural products like straw, we uh, once again return to a much more responsible way of living in terms of the requirements of the natural world itself, which is a living system. Our planet Earth is a living organism. It has its own laws, it has its own requirements, and it has consequences far beyond the consequences of when we violate a human law. And we are doing that every single day in the construction of 99.9% .9 of all the houses that are being constructed in the United States and in the immediate environment here in Sullivan County. What are the special benefits other than that, which is a huge all by itself. Well, there's a wonderful aesthetic to a straw bale house. It has a very soft, very smooth, very undulating, uh, very creative uh, type of uh, uh, attribute to it. You can put your own imprint on it in any way that you want. It has an R factor, an insulation value of 52 to 54, probably three times what there is in uh, commercial buildings. It's more rodent free. It's more fire retardant than a stick frame commercial home. So those are just a few of the uh, reasons why you would want to have <coughs> uh, straw bale benefits in your home. Uh, and that should really give people some incentives to plan ahead and really give some consideration. And, and that requires some study and some personal commitment for their plans for building in the future. I think uh, my first impression is, is how uh, how simple they are, how uh, beautiful they are, how organic they are. Um, very soft corners, um, very beautiful to the eye. So um, aesthetically, I like them. Aesthetically, and also uh, they make a lot of sense. That was, that was my first uh, impression. Well, the building is great. This is quite a. Um magical place in the in, in the town of Fallsburg. This is Morningside Park and the field that the building is on is a field that has just been brought back to life. We started a Pop Warner Little League here with football and cheerleading and that's something that this community didn't have. So as a result of growing pains with more athletes and more of a need to store um, sports equipment this idea just seemed to fit perfectly. Okay, the reason why I got into this project is because I worked for the Renaissance pro program for like three, oh, three years, and two years I worked for the um, it was um the I think it was the youth pro um youth Renaissance program. It was for little kids, and I was getting paid five fifteen an hour, and I was helped with Liberty. I did the mural for Liberty, um, and I guess they choose my name or whatever, and. Sandy Oxford came and told
told me about this program and then I got involved with the Renaissance because I like working for the Renaissance program and I enjoy doing it. Uh, I believe the whole thing got started as a idea by Dick to do sustainable building technologies in Sullivan County and then from there the profession of applying for the Renaissance grant came to fruit and now we're here we are at the site building this building and the building is made with straw which is a sustainable commodity it's not chopping down trees there's some wood involved but it's considerably less than a traditional stick built construction and um, it's uh, got a tremendously high insulative value so it has a lot of really good things um, environmentally <laughs> we were fortunate to receive a a grant from the Beaverkill and Gary Foundation. We're in the category B of the uh, Sullivan Renaissance program and we were received the financial assistance and we have a project manager uh, and a project communicator to, to recruit young people and, and others to assist us in the building. And so we've been uh, really very fortunate. Uh, we've had some uh, interns from uh, Apple Pond Farming Center and uh, other people that have given us a lot of assistance and uh, without all of them giving their separate types of input uh, the building simply could not have been done in the very very short time uh, that it was done. It was done beyond anybody's expectation in terms of time. The Fallsburg uh, building is a sport equipment uh, storage shed for Pop Warner League and Little League and soccer leagues over there for the Fallsburg and the other towns around there. It uh, features a shallow freeze-free foundation. It has uh, four to six inches of insulation and a footprint that is uh, four to eight feet beyond the actual footprint of the building itself so that we can store the warmth of the earth uh, in the summer months and retard the loss of that heat uh, and of course resist the entrance of cold underneath the building. And then we sat with some off some contractors who volunteered their time to the project and set up the, the frame. That that was that was about two weeks worth of of people on their time off getting the the, um, the skeleton set up, the frame set up. It's a post and beam construction and uh, when I got involved with that basically it was a skeleton of post and beam with the rafters laid out and uh, with part of the sheathing for the roof uh, to be finished. We uh, put tar paper like conventional houses on, on the uh, on the sheathing and then laid out the shingles and it took I think probably a day to shingle the roof. After the roof was on we kind of uh, came to the conclusion that it needed some kind of structural integrity to keep the building, especially the roof, from shifting. So what, as you can see in the finished project, you can see the diagonal uh, two by sixes, actually two by eights that were put in and those were put in to uh, keep the building from shifting and swinging around and settling and whatever, so that tied in all the corners. The bales came, It there were, I guess, I don't know, maybe three or four different bales that arrived until we could get the right bales, the golden bales that, that are in the interior of the walls. It, it was kind of hard because you had to put the, the straw bales and you have to cut in half because they have to be staggered and they had to be lined up like bricks. But, and you had to stuff the, the bales that we had flat first. You had to stuff them so they're tight. And you have to tap them a little bit so everything's leveled with the outside of the building. Straw is a natural product and nature is not perfect. It's not regular. Uh, and so you have bales that are 36 inches long and they're 38 inches long and they're 42 and they're 44. Uh, 
and some are a little bit wider, some are a little bit taller. So this is really a structure which you really build, and you build around what you were given. And it really requires a lot of focus and a lot of discipline and a lot of problem solving. For instance, uh, you want to make the wall rigid, you want to make it uh, strong, you want to make it straight, um, or after a while, do you? If nature's, the veils themselves uh, say, well, we're not just going to be exactly straight. And what looked just like it was straight when we put it up on the wall, it turns out to be have a little bend in it at the, in the middle or at the end. Well, then we have these big mallets that we, we use to sort of uh, uh, shape it. We have special pull saws from Japan that uh, can uh, change it a little bit in terms of its contour. And of course we have bale needles so that we can make mini bales or we can custom make a bale so that it will fit in. And of course we have to stagger the bales. Well, sometimes staggering a bale is a lot easier to say than it is to do. And uh, so there are a lot of issues in putting the uh, bales in the walls. And then of course we have to have up to five coats of uh, plaster. Uh, we're using earth clays rather than lime, which is rather caustic because we have a lot of young people and others uh, participating in the construction of the building. So we're using earth clays, which are very benign. They're wonderful to have in your hands. They're, it's just like putty. The consistency is about the same of that as cream cheese. Uh, it's uh, really almost a pleasure in many, I think it is kind of fun actually, to uh, do the plastering. But each of the five coats has to have a different recipe. And you have to kind of experiment. So it takes a lot longer than, than one would really think. And of course, we are operating here with a natural product and of course in the natural environment where uh, Mother Sun is the boss. And when she says it's going to rain, well, it's going to rain. And straw, unlike hay, cannot be rained on. If it's rained on in the slightest, that bale is no good at all. Um, I would love to see this kind of technology develop in this area in Sullivan County and beyond. I think that um, it could be a really good thing for our community. We live in a place where we need a tremendous amount of heating in the winter time and because of the high R value of straw bale buildings, it's, um, it's very cost effective for heating and cooling purposes and I think that the further you develop the technology you could incorporate local farmers to be producing the straw bales for us and have a, a sort of a, a more communal economic system than um, buying lumber from say across the country mm -hmm. and all the you know freight charges and fossil fuels that are required to bring those things over to this side of the country. What do I hope the project will lead to? I hope the project will lead to, um, I hope it becomes a spark of the possibilities of what we can do in this community. And I hope that it becomes an example of how the sustainable movement can involve all members of the community, even the ones who may be disenfranchised or disconnected because here in this project, the leadership of the project has managed to engage some of the most underserved individuals in the community to really excite them about these concepts. There is a lot more that needs to be done. I think I would like to see municipalities really get involved in building, going green and building green. Now I want to quickly say that these buildings uh, have uh, architectural renderings. They have licensed engineers behind them. These are not some fly-by-the-night designs. These are technically uh, uh, strongly designed buildings. And so this is something that definitely is an option for the future. And it will have to compete. And uh, I'm confident that uh, it will soon join the, uh, uh, the, the list of possible opportunities for people to build. And if done in, in construction crews, uh, we can build buildings more, uh, more inexpensively that will last longer, that will be more beautiful, use much less energy, uh, and uh, serve the general public uh, 
uh, in a better way than most of the uh, construction that we currently have. And in the public sector, there's a great need for greater frugality, uh, for, for greater e cost effectiveness in, in, what, in, in the town garages for their, for their trucks, uh, for firehouses, and so many, many other entities, for public offices, where there won't need to be air conditioning, there won't need to be hardly central heating uh, in these huge buildings. Uh, and if, if it is needed, of course, then it could also come by the, uh, the addition of uh, solar thermal or geothermal or wind power or solar electric or what we call photovoltaics. Marry the renewable energy technologies of elect electric production from uh, nature's own power or the sun's power uh, and you have a great marriage in terms of a design for the future. And that's what I think uh, the straw bale and its, and its other possibilities represent. It's a designed for the for the future. educational system and this is something that young can really tune into because they can do these concepts are not so difficult to understand it may seem new but they're very old as we're, we're learning these these ideas and this um, uh, anything that connects young people to the earth anything that connects young people to the community is something that can certainly transform a young person's life and I believe that we are doing that here around this building. We're, we're transforming some, some ideas and some thoughts into, into something really positive for the future. I would recommend uh, someone to build a straw bale house uh, for the reasons that it takes uh, uh, very little 
um, natural resources probably takes uh, maybe uh, uh, a third to half of the of the lumber um, it's something that uh, you could do yourself that's um, that uh, you wouldn't have to be a professional to build a, a strawville house um, it's something that you could create yourself that you could uh, design yourself um, uh, and I think that it's uh, it's very rewarding and it's a, a very organic building um, and it doesn't have to be complicated um, so I think it's very simple it's beautiful and um, it's uh, you know I think it's a nice way to go I think we'll all have stories about each other and a sense of each other that we didn't have before and uh, to the extent that uh, people participated in the program, to that, to that extent they will have the same pleasure that I had. Uh, what you put in, you get back uh, fivefold or more. So it is always good to be part of a project that has some intrinsic value to it because no matter how much you give to it, the reality is, and it's a wonderful story to tell, you always get back more than you put in. And that's a very, very good trade. Okay, I just hope that the Little League and the softball, whoever uses this building, that they take very good care of this because we're working our hardest coming yeah. out here, okay. trying to come out here every day doing this. Um, it took us three, three and a half weeks almost, well, two and a half uh, weeks. And we're hopefully being done by August, hopefully. But I just hope that the softball and Little League takes very good care of this building. It's a really nice piece of work.